Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a drama comedy film, The Bothersome Man. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man and woman tongue wrestling in a train station. Their kiss is supposed to be intimate and romantic, but it's a very sloppy and noisy kiss, without hormone let go. What's even worse is that there's no emotion at all on the couple's faces. They open their smelly mouths further and continue their strange tongue massage. Across the subway platform, a man named Andreas is watching the tongue wrestling couple. He can't keep his eyes off of them because he finds them unsettling. The squelching sounds of the couple haunt him. When the train comes barreling down the station, Andres makes the surprising decision to jump on the train tracks and end his shitty life. The scene cuts to an abandoned gas station in the middle of nowhere. Andres appears to be alive and riding a bus. The bus drops him off at the station, and he stands there awkwardly until a man in a suit picks him up in his car. The man drives him far away from the barren desert and into the lush countryside. They enter a modern city, and he drops Andres off at a fancy apartment. This will be where Andreas will stay. Andreas enters the apartment and marvels at how expensive and new everything is. He looks at his reflection in the mirror and then decides to go to sleep. In the morning, Andreas heads to the office building, where he will be starting his fancy corporate job. He meets his boss and his various colleagues around the office. Everyone seems nice and approachable. His office is also sleek and modern. The boss leaves him and he sits at his desk. A few hours later, he is hard at work crunching numbers. He stands up and looks out into the perfect modern city outside. He takes a break and eats some food on a bench outside. He notices that everything and everyone in the city seems to be perfect, but no one is showing any emotions. Everyone is just moving mechanically. Right then, a man threw himself off one of the high buildings, and his body got impaled on the spiky metal fence below. There is no emotion on the workers' faces as they remove the corpse from the fence. Andreas decides to go out that night to a hit club, but no matter how many drinks he consumes, he doesn't get drunk. He goes to the bathroom and encounters a man slumped on the floor. Andreas comments that they must be watering down the alcoholic drinks because he isn't feeling anything. The man replies that it might just be a coincidence. But another man who is inside one of the cubicles pipes up and says that it's true. But it's not just the club. The man tells Andreas that he can't even taste food anymore. Andreas walks home from the club. Near his apartment, he hears the beguiling voice of a woman singing, but he can't locate her. The voice seems to be coming from the sewer grate. When he gets home, he tries to eat some food, but just like what the man in the restroom said, the food isn't as delicious as before. The next day, Andreas is cutting some pieces of paper in the office. Suddenly, he accidentally chops off his index finger with the sharp blade. Blood gushes out of his wound, and he slumps to the floor in shock. One of his office mates notices him and steps forward to help, but he screams at her not to touch him. Andreas then loses consciousness. The next thing he knows, he wakes up in a car. His hand is bandaged, and presumably, he was treated at a hospital while he was unconscious. The vehicle dropped him off at his apartment. He unwraps the bloody bandage to wash his wound, but to his surprise, his finger is back to normal. Andreas is now starting to think that there's something wrong with the new city he is in, so he decides to go back to the abandoned gas station and wait for the man in the car again. He tries to follow him, but the car and its tracks disappear. The next morning, Andreas' boss is waiting for him in his office. He tells Andreas that he can take as many breaks as he needs, and he can also request new equipment. At lunch, he gets invited by his co-worker to sit with them. Andreas begins to let go of his hormones with multiple women, but he doesn't get any hormone feelings for them, and his life feels more and more monotonous, just like the movie narrator. He gets a girlfriend as well, but it's obvious that he wants something more in his life. He meets a blonde woman named Ms. Blonde, and for Andreas, she is different. She laughs, and she is very passionate, so unlike the cold women he's been with, Andreas asks her out on a hormone date, and she agrees, despite Andreas having a girlfriend. They go out to see a Daniel C.C. movie, and afterward, he takes her home for hormone let go. The two of them tongue wrestle passionately, and Andreas is besotted with her. For the first time, it seems that he has found happiness in the strange city. But there is still the matter of his girlfriend. One day, Andreas coldly tells her that he has fallen in love with someone else, and he's leaving her. The girlfriend doesn't really care and just continues to sip coffee while watching something on Daniel CC movie channel. She responds that it's alright with her, but he should stay until Saturday because they have guests coming over that night. Sure enough, Andreas grants his request and pretends that they're fine in front of their guests when the night comes. Afterward, Andreas wastes no time trying to woo Miss Blonde. He goes to her apartment with a bouquet of flowers. He then leads her to the restaurant he rented just for the two of them. 
He wants them to be together, but Ms. Blonde is not really happy that he broke up with his girlfriend. In fact, she was content with the relationship they had before, but doesn't really want anything serious. She has been sleeping with other men while having an affair with Andreas. He still deeply loves her, so he asks her to move in with him as long as she drops her other boy toys. She nonchalantly agrees, saying that those hormone-rich men don't really mean anything to her. He also adds that it would be nice to have a bigger house. Andres realizes that Miss Blonde never truly felt anything real about him. She was just like the other cold, emotionless people living in the city who had no hearts. So Andres stands up and leaves Miss Blonde behind in the restaurant. He wanders through the city and enters a subway station. It is the same station and the same scene from the beginning of the film. Andreas steps into the platform and sees the couple sharing a horrid tongue massage. Seeing them do such an act with no intimacy or warmth fills Andreas with disgust. Because he is heartbroken over Ms. Blonde's cruelty, he chooses to jump into the tracks and end his shitty life again. He collides with the train, but doesn't instantly die. He gets run over multiple times, his body torn apart, and his bones crushed and broken. The last train drags his body further down the dark tunnel, but Andres doesn't die even then. He stands up with blood all over him as his body slowly mends. He limps out of the subway and emerges into the empty sea. A pair of cleaners find him and put him in their car. They then drop him off at his ex-girlfriend's apartment. When she sees him, she doesn't make any comment about his bloody appearance. She merely invites him to do go-kart on the weekend, as if they never broke up. Since Andreas doesn't really have anything better to do, he just agrees and submits to the meaningless and materialistic life he's living. He continues to live with the girlfriend he doesn't love and goes out to clubs where he feels nothing. The only thing that interests him is the music he hears from the same sewer grate in the street. He notices that the building above the sewer grate has an open gate. He ventures inside and discovers an underground room with warm light coming from a hundred light bulbs strum on the ceiling. Andreas meets a cleaner there, who tells him about the hole in the wall where the strange music and sounds have been coming from. The hole is just small, and Andreas can't really see what's behind the hole. There are also items in the room like a painting and several lamps that are implied to have been taken from the world behind the hole. The cleaner begs him not to say anything, because it's forbidden to know about the hole. The two men are captivated by the magnificent sounds coming from the hole. Andreas becomes obsessed with the hole. The mystery of it plagues his every waking moment. At his job, it is all he can think about. He can't even work anymore and just sits in front of the computer. His boss comes in and checks in on him. Andres tells him that he misses seeing children. Children represent warmth, creativity, and enthusiasm that all seem to be missing in the strange city. He asks his boss if he still remembers what a baby looks like, but the boss is already out of his office. Andres decides that he has to know what's beyond the hole because there has to be something more than the meaningless life he's living now. So he calls his girlfriend and tells her he'll be home late and not to wait up for him. He gathers several tools like hammers and pickaxes and goes to the underground room late at night. He begins breaking down the wall. He chips at the stone all night, using the hammer, the pickaxe, and even a drill. The cleaner hears the wear of the drill and discovers that the obsessed Andreas has created a hole wide enough for a person to squeeze through. He stares at the hole in wonder as the most enticing smell of food wafts through it. At that point, Andres has only drilled several meters into the wall and has not yet reached the end, but already they are so close to the warm world. The two of them grab a canister of coffee and drink it while inside the tunnel that Andres drilled. The smell and the sounds coming from beyond the hole are just so alluring and they just sit there together in silence. The next morning, Andres learns that someone has already replaced him in the office. His boss leads him out and tells him that some people are just meant for different careers. Already, the cruel world is disposing of him, as if he is just mere trash. Andres and the cleaner focus on extending the tunnel. They come to another wall and a tiny hole that peeks out into the other world. Andres presses his eye to the small hole and sees that there is a tiny cottage behind the wall. The hole is only large enough for Andreas to squeeze his arm out and grab a delicious cake sitting on a plate in the kitchen. He immediately feasts on the cake and savors the only real and delicious food he has eaten for a long time. But other cleaners arrive and arrest Andreas for illegally drilling the hole. The government of the city wants to keep the real world a secret from the citizens, because they want the people to keep believing that the meaningless lives they are living are perfect. Outside, scores of people have lined up because the smells and the sounds are enticing them too. The cleaners load Andreas into a vehicle. They take him to several of the city officials. The female leader taps at the car window to talk to Andreas. She tells him that the people who live in their city are satisfied because their every need is met and they have nothing more they would want. She asks him to change his mind and be a good citizen. 
but Andres says nothing and just stares into space. There is no changing his mind because he has tasted the real world and he knows the strange city he's living in is nothing compared to the warmth and love that he saw on the other side. Andrea's fate is sealed. He gets taken out of the city and back into the countryside he saw when he first came. Then the scenery changes to an abandoned desert and they eventually arrive at the abandoned gas station from earlier. They grab Andrea's and forcefully load him into the bus compartment. After a dark and bumpy ride, Andrea's senses that the bus has stopped. The movie ends with Andreas stepping out of the compartment and discovering that he's in a frozen wasteland. This is his sentence for violating the rules of the strange city. He now has to spend his life alone in an unforgiving place, possibly forever. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.